Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Greetings, people loved by God. On this, the fourth Sunday of Easter, this fourth Sunday of Easter is always a special Sunday in the church year. We call this Sunday Good Shepherd Sunday. You will hear the theme of Jesus as our Good Shepherd throughout this service, from the hymns to the readings to the reciting together of that wonderful Psalm of David, Psalm 23. A reminder that you can go to our website, chapelofthecross.org, and be involved in our uh, Bible classes for adults. In addition to the online classes taught by Dave Funky and Bill Rusnick, I will soon be leading an online discovery class. That class is especially for those who would like to become members of Chapel of the Cross or just know a little bit more about the Christian faith. Please contact me, contact me here at Chapel of the Cross if you would like to be involved in that class. Also on our website is a link to our interactive Sunday school newsletter for children. I invite you to check that out, to go through that with your kids, and then share that newsletter with your friends and with your family who have children. On our website, you'll also find the bulletin for this worship service. Download uh, that from the resources tab on the homepage. And also on the website, you may give your offering to the Lord and his church. You can click the Give tab there on the homepage of the website. Follow the instructions that are posted there, or you may just send your offering to the church office. For our worship today, I will be leading the liturgy and preaching the sermon. Vicar, er Vicar Ellery Glenn will be our lector. Ryan Meyer, Linda Christian, Matt McEwen, and Nate Lesh will be leading the music. May God bless our worship this day as we begin with singing our opening hymn, Sing Praise to God, the Highest Good. It's hymn number 819 in Lutheran Service Book. We sing verses 1, 3, 4, and 5.
In the name of the Father, who loved us and sent the Good Shepherd. In the name of the Son, Jesus, the Good Shepherd of the sheep, who became the Lamb of God for us. In the name of the Holy Spirit, who enables us to hear the voice of our Good Shepherd. Amen. Lord Jesus, our Good Shepherd, you have promised us that we shall not be in want, but we confess as your sheep that we are stubborn and often do not want for ourselves what you want to give us, your mercy and blessing. Forgive us, Lord. As the Good Shepherd, you have promised us peace in green pastures by quiet waters, but too often we as sheep wander and stray, missing out on your blessings. Forgive us, Lord. As our Good Shepherd, you promised to restore our souls. We confess our sinning against you. We deserve nothing more than your eternal wrath and judgment. Forgive us, Lord. You promised to be with us even when we walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Yet we confess, O Lord, that we do things in that valley that make us easy prey for predators. We sin against you in thought, word, and deed. Forgive us, Lord. You have promised to comfort us with your rod and your staff. And we confess that we are helpless to save ourselves. We need you to save us, Lord. Hear the good news. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The good shepherd, Jesus Christ, became the Lamb of God, shedding his blood on Calvary's altar for your forgiveness. Your sins, all of them, have been forgiven. As a called and ordained servant of the good shepherd, I forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks be to God. Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, merciful Father, since you have wakened from death the shepherd of your sheep, grant us your Holy Spirit that when we hear the voice of our shepherd, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading is from the book of Acts, the second chapter. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. 
Everyone was filled with awe, and many wonders and miraculous signs were done by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. Selling their possessions and goods, they gave to anyone as he had need. Every day, they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We read together Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Our second reading is from 1 Peter, the second chapter. For it is commendable if a man bears up under the pain of unjust suffering because he is conscious of God. But how is it to your credit if you receive a beating for doing wrong and enduring it? But if you suffer for doing good and you endure it, it is commendable before God. To this you were called because Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin and no deceit was found in his mouth. When they hurled their insults at him, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. For you were like sheep going astray, but now you have returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. I tell you the truth. The man who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. The man who enters by the gate is the shepherd of his sheep. The watchman opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they did not recognize a stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but they did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore, Jesus said again, I tell you the truth. I am the gate for the sheep. All who ever came before me were thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. He will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We sing the hymn of the word, the king of love my shepherd is, hymn 709.
Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. As a child growing up at St. John Lutheran Church in Wheaton, Illinois, we had a a huge stained glass window in front of the church. At least it was huge to me at that time as a little boy, but uh, just a big stained glass window. And we called it the victory window. It was called the victory window because it pictured and it quoted 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57. And that reads, Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And on that window, there's this narrow road leading upward to heaven with the saints of God ascending and an angel beating back the devil who is grabbing for saints near the bottom of the window. And at the top, just this beautiful picture of the victorious Jesus Christ. Hands outstretched in welcome. He who died, who rose again, who defeated death, and who opened heaven for all believers. When I think about my Lord Jesus Christ, this picture, that beautiful stained glass window, so very often comes to my mind. Perhaps you get a picture in your mind too when you think about Jesus. Maybe you think about the Christus Rex here over the altar here at Chapel of the Cross. Christ, our King, giving all the blessings of the cross to the world as he holds us in his hand. He is the King of kings, and he is the Lord of lords, and he rules with justice and mercy and love. Or maybe you get another picture in your mind when you think about Jesus. Maybe you get the picture that our gospel text talks about. And the picture that's always the theme for the fourth Sunday of Easter. Jesus, the Good Shepherd. Maybe you think about Jesus lovingly carrying a little lamb. Maybe it got lost. Or it got tired. Or he's carrying it just because he loves that little sheep so much. And he lovingly, gently, tenderly, brings that little one back to the fold. He leads. He guides. He nourishes. He feeds. He takes care of his sheep. (laughs) I, I love that picture of Jesus. The Gospel of John, it's full of beautiful pictures of Jesus. We we call them the I am statements of Jesus. Where Jesus says, I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the way and the truth and the life. I am the vine. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the good shepherd. And because the Bible says in this text here, they didn't understand what he was saying to them about being the good shepherd, Jesus says, let me give you another picture. I am the gate. For the sheep. I am the door. That's a pretty simple picture, isn't it? I mean, a door. (laughs) It's something that's kind of second nature nature to us. You can't get in or out of your home without opening and shutting a door. I couldn't get in or outside of this building, get, get into this building without opening and shutting a door. In fact, several of them. You know, we take that whole concept of doors, I think, a little bit for granted, don't you think? I mean, I'm not thinking right now. I wonder if there's going to be a door on my house when I get home today. I don't think that. I assume that there's going to be a door there. I guess if there's not, there's going to be a problem. And that next time you go to your car to drive somewhere, go to the store or something, I don't think any of us will go out to, you know, go outside or go down in the garage and say, I, I wonder if there's a door on my car right now. You know there's a door on your car. And you know what? When you get out there, chances are you're not even going to think about it. You're not even going to notice it. The only time you really notice it is when it's locked or when it's blocked somehow 
Well, then it's not really a door anymore. It's a wall. It's a barrier. But Jesus comes to his people in this text. He says, I am the gate for the sheep. I am the door. He's not a barrier. He's not a wall. He is an open door through which people can go and find life. They can find freedom. He is the door into the kingdom, into the kingdom of God, into the kingdom of heaven. The very door to God the Father's heart. And in him, in Christ, you can enter in and you can be saved. Jesus didn't just say it, you know. He lived it. You know the story of the paralyzed man? Remember that story? That man had a problem. He couldn't even get into the room where Jesus was because there was just too many people around him. I mean, they were a wall to him. You remember what he did? What his friends did, actually? Essentially, they made a door. They opened up the roof and let him down to Jesus through that opening. But he had other walls that were in his way. First thing is, he was, he was a sinner. And he had nowhere to find forgiveness. I mean, that man was tied up. He was in bondage to his sin. And he was sick. Couldn't move. He was paralyzed. And what does Jesus do? Jesus walks up to the man and he says, I'm the door. Young man, be of good cheer. Your sins are forgiven. That wall, that barrier, I've taken it away. You are free. You can find life. And as if that weren't enough, he then says to the man, and now get up and try out your legs. I am the door. A door that if you follow, it will lead you to life. Remember Levi? We know him better as as Matthew maybe, but at that time, he was Levi, sitting behind his tax counting booth, making sure all his bills were straight, counting all of his money. That's what he lived to do, to count his money. And Jesus walks up to Levi and he says, Oh, Levi, there is so much more important things in life than counting money. Follow me. I am the door. People walk through the door and they find life. I can give forgiveness for the past and you're not bound by it anymore. You can find life and you can find it abundantly. Remember Lazarus. How can you forget Lazarus? Not long before Jesus was crucified, Jesus' good friend Lazarus had died. And Mary and Martha had hoped Jesus would come and heal him before he died, but Jesus didn't get there in time. In fact, by the time that Jesus finally got there, Lazarus had been dead for four days. Now there's a man who had a wall in front of him. He had a barrier in front of him. He was dead. And then there's this big stone in front of the tomb. and His body's all wrapped up in linens. That man is bound up. He had some walls in front of him. Jesus comes to that tomb and he says, Lazarus, come out. (laughs) And Lazarus walks out of the tomb. I am the door, Jesus says. When I come, I bring life. I don't come to bind people. I don't come to put a wall before them, a barrier. I come to give them freedom so that they can live I come to give my blessing. I come to bring love and forgiveness and mercy. I am the door. And as Jesus is saying, I am the door, and my sheep hear my voice and they follow me, we hear him also say, so guess what? (laughs) I want you to be a door too. Through you, people find life. Through you, people are not bound up. As a good shepherd loves, so I want you to love. And as a good shepherd opens doors, opens the door of forgiveness, so I want you to open that door to forgiveness. As a good shepherd blesses, 
I want you to bless. As a good shepherd guides and, and as he protects, so I want you to guide and protect. And the good shepherd comes to you, to your home, and he says, be a door, people of God. Be a door for my people. Be a door for my flock. Be a door. But I tell you what, sometimes we're not very good doors, at least not good open doors. In fact, sometimes we can be pretty effective walls, pretty good barriers. And sometimes we're not very good sheep. And we wander, we get lost, we stray, we fight, we squabble, we're proud. I heard this retelling of the 23rd Psalm, at least the first part of it, and I I think if you pardon the paraphrase, it seems to fit pretty well. The Lord is my shepherd, but I still want. I want whatever my heart desires. He makes me lie down in green pastures, but I spy grass that is greener. He leads me beside still waters, but I am not still. I know more and more places where I'd like to drink my fill. He restores my soul. But I want to live my life the way I see fit. It makes me walk in the paths of righteousness. But I'd rather romp in the open fields of this world. He leads me for his name's sake. But I want to make a name for myself. The Lord is my shepherd, and boy, does he have his work cut out for him. (laughs) Isn't that the truth? That's you and me as sinful sheep. We are so very often a closed door to the good shepherd, so very often a closed door to others. There's so much in you and me to forgive. There is so much in you and me to transform. He has called me to be his own, to be an open door for him. (laughs) But I cannot even begin to live in his calling apart from him. And Jesus comes to us and he says, I am the door. I have come to bring life to my people, to open things up to them so that they can find freedom, so that they can have life, eternal life, abundant life. And I've asked you to follow me. There are so many people out there who need your love. So many who need your guidance, who need your enthusiasm, who need your blessing, who need the door of life. I am the door, Jesus says. And I've called you to be a door. Be a door to eternal life for people. And we hear that, we say, oh, Jesus, how do we do that? I mean, we're just sheep, remember? Just wandering, straying, sinful sheep. How in the world are we supposed to be a door for you? Jesus says, oh, my sheep, if you want to know how to be an open door, just look to me. Look at your Savior. He sees a group of people facing a, a huge barrier. We've got this wall of sin right in front of us. And what does he do? He gives up the glories of heaven. He becomes a baby. He takes on our flesh. And he suffers and he dies and he rises. He becomes an open door to heaven. He's got a love for his flock. He's got a love for his people. He says, I am the door. And then he died on that cross and opened that gift to us, that gift of eternal life. I came to be a door for you. I came so that you may have life and so that you may have it to the full. And then Jesus says to us, be that open door. Show people my love and my forgiveness. 
Show them the freedom that comes from being a sheep in my flock. Doesn't take much. A loving word to a hurting friend. A word about Jesus to somebody searching for hope. Some time grabbing some groceries for someone who can't get out. Praying for others. Praying for the sick or the homebound or those affected by this virus, for the first responders, for the nurses and the doctors during this pandemic. Continuing to share the faith with spouse, with kids, with parents, with loved ones. Doesn't take much. Jesus is the door. (laughs) What a beautiful picture he gives us. He is the open door to love, forgiveness, blessings, and mercy. He is the door to a new life, abundant life. And he invites you and me to be an open door for him. Amen. Now may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We continue our worship by confessing together our common faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Together we confess. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Good shepherd of the sheep, You have delivered us from our sins and from the power of death and made us your people forever. Give to us your spirit that we may know the fullness of your goodness now until we know your joy forever in heaven. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, deliver us from all of our enemies. Keep us safe amid the dangers and terrors of this mortal life and bring us to everlasting life through Christ our good shepherd especially during this time of pandemic. Keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy. Sustain and support the anxious and the fearful and lift up all affected by this virus that we may rejoice in your comfort knowing that nothing can separate us from your love in Christ Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, give wisdom to those who lead us in this land. Peace to the nations courage to pursue justice for all people, and protection for those who protect and defend us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for all those committed to the spread of the gospel of your Son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for those who have heard the call of your Holy Spirit to serve as pastors, deaconesses, chaplains, missionaries, and other leaders. And today we pray especially for those students who this past week received calls and assignments into ministry through our church body seminaries, including Alex Goodwin, who will serve his vicarage at Our Savior Lutheran Church in Washington, Illinois, and Vicar Jim Marriott, as he serves as Director of Music Arts at Concordia Seminary. Empower them, sustain them, bless them and their families. Be their inspiration and strength so that the work that they do in Jesus' name will touch the lives of many and will bring glory to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, wipe every tear from your people and give your comfort to those who are hurting. 
We remember before you Megan and Jacob Purcell as they have lost their belongings due to an apartment fire. Even as we praise you that they were not harmed, we ask that you give your peace and strength during their time of loss. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Good shepherd of the sheep, give to the sick and those who suffer in mind or in body healing, comfort, strength, and patience according to your will. We especially pray this day for Lonza Buford, Ilsa Hornig, Kayla Rainey, and Linda Smythe. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, our good shepherd, be present with those who grieve the loss of loved ones, especially the family and loved ones of Fran Burmel, who died in the Lord last week Thursday. Marcy Oliver and her family upon the death of her father, Stephen Ensley, this past week. Levina Reese and Levita Stevens upon the death of their brother, Bill. Bud Schultz and his family upon the death of his stepmother, Dolly, this past Monday. And the family and loved ones of Robert Zerheide, who died in the Lord this past Sunday. Lord, you promise that as we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you will be there beside us to comfort us. Give a special measure of comfort and peace to these families. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. We sing our closing hymn together. It's hymn number 793 in Lutheran Service Book. Praise my soul, the King of Heaven. <laughs>